Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, we will be looking at AMT's 1960s Chevrolet Custom Fleet Side with Go-Kart. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. You scour around YouTube looking for any information on these model kits. You find countless build videos, but nobody even wants to show you what's in the instruction sheet. But then, you found the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel. We feature classic plastic, new releases, television and movie cars, domestic kits, imports, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So without further ado, Hepcats, let's go down to the bench and see the nitty gritty on this 1960s AMT kitty. The original version of this kit came out in 1998 from AMT Ertl and was simply known as the 60 Custom Fleet Side. If you'd like to see an unboxing of this model, check it out up here. This edition of the 60 Chevrolet Custom Fleet Side includes this retro style artwork as well as this nifty period correct 1960 go-kart. AMT really nailed the spirit of the era for this model truck considering that the late 50s and early 60s was the height of go-kart racing. Here we have an ad from a 1959 Carcraft magazine just so you can see how accurate this little go-kart is to the one in the kit. Underneath we get a parts overview of everything that's included in this model kit. Tires, decals, chrome pieces, and the regular plastic parts. It is a licensed GM official product for ages 10 and up, will require paint and glue. On this side of the box we get a top rear three-quarter view of the truck itself, as well as the mounting for the go-kart in the back. It includes go-kart racks. We also have the expanded decal sheet with colorful options, which is more than what we got in the 1998 original release. And talk about wonderful features. Here we have the inline six cylinder engine, the chrome grille and hood parts, as well as the Chevrolet emblem. We also have the detailed interior, stock hubcaps, and our 1960 go kart. Ooby dooby dooby, this is Crazy Mad Dog Trevor giving you all the news that is the news on your AMT 60 Chevrolet Custom Fleet Side. Ow! Now tune in, cats, as we check out this important message here. Before you begin to assemble your model kit, study the instructions carefully. Shooby doo wah. This will help you form familiarize yourself with the parts location as you proceed. All right, so we have all these great things right here. Now, I always show these instructions because you might cumble, uh, stumble huh, across this model kit here somewhere, and maybe your version doesn't have the instructions. So, we get to take a look at it right here in this video so that you will be able to build your 60 Chevrolet fleet side. <laughs> That'll be awesome. All right, let's take a look at these wonderful instructions. Here we have it for all you Hepcats. We have the cat from AMT saying it is recommended you search the internet for additional color references and details. Far out, man. What's the internet? All right. Now, anyway, this isn't 1960. This is 2023. And here we have all our paint colors listed from A to Z including AAICBC and three triangles. Isn't that funky? Part number right here, clear piece with the C in a black circle. A black circle with a P inside it is plated parts. This star pattern with the number in it is the completed assembly. Here we have the dual arrow, which is the optional parts. Right here, we've got the square with a black triangle in it saying remove the part. This one has a two and an X for how many times you need to repeat that step. The number may vary. And then we have this bent little square box with the wavy line underneath, which refers to our decal placement. This kit includes GM licensing as well as Firestone for the tires. Our broadcast continues here with this wonderful little Chevy inline six engine. Here you have the engine block right and left hand side, as well as the transmission molded in place. And we have our valve cover up top and our oil pan down below. 
Here we've got our front timing chain cover, including our fan belt and pulleys. And here's our fan. And all this goes together, shooby doo -wah, into the completed engine. However, no engine would be complete without the distributor, the coil, the starter motor, and this little baffle for the oil pressure, as well as our oil pump right here. And finishing off this wonderful melody on the driver's side of the engine, we have the top of the air cleaner, the air cleaner body, the carburetor, the intake manifold, our exhaust manifold, and our generator, which hooks up onto this pulley on our fan belts. Ah woo! All you Hepcats and Swingin' Sisters will really love step number two as we do this four times over. We have our front hubcaps and a painting guide going in here. These, of course, are plated. Here we have our Firestone tires with the nifty white walls, as well as a wheel retainer and our wheel back. Put them together four times and you're ready to roll. And bringing you the best that is the best, we have our stock colors right here, which includes jet black, brigade blue, sky blue, marlin blue, which is a medium blue, Klondike gold, garrison gray, medium, hemlock green, dark, Neptune green, medium green blue, Omaha orange, cardinal red, bright, grenadier red, dark, tartan turquoise, pure white, golden yellow, which is light, and Yukon Yellow, which is dark. And here's how to set up your two-tone paint jobs. Moving on to step number three, we have our chassis and undercarriage. This is the first part of the assembly. Here we have a two-piece differential with the front and back gluing together. We also have these stabilizer bars and springs. Here we've got our spare tire being glued up underneath. And we also have our front steering as well as the upper A arms, which will glue on on the other side. Step B finalizes more of our chassis here, as we have this anti-sway bar being glued in place, our shock absorbers going in the back, and then we have our front spindles here, as well as the steering box down below. And all you Dodge brothers will notice this right away. We have a torsion bar style front suspension with a little groovy piece here that we need to cut out in order to build this correctly. Now, step three, part C, shows us the exhaust system being hooked in place, as well as our front shock absorbers, the engine getting dropped down. But hold on, hold that thought. Don't put the engine in until you hook up the drive shaft to the rear differential and the back of the transmission housing. Finally, cats, we get ready to roll, shake, rattle, and roll, that is, as we glue on our wheels onto the posts on our suspension here so that we can roll on down the road. Don't touch that dial, hep cats and groovy mamas, because what we have coming up next in panel four is our interior with all the creature comforts of home, like this wonderful dashboard with the pedals molded in place. We also have our steering column and steering wheel. These little eyebrows glue up on the dashboard. They are the pads, I do believe. And here we have a two-piece bench seat. We've got separate molded side door panels and our floor with the back molded in place as well. Ow! Now we're gonna bring it on home as we start to build the body of our Chevrolet Apache 10, which is what this model kit really is under the skin. So here we've got a separate roof panel being glued onto the body, which is an interesting take, but I can see where the difficulties might arise in molding this from the factory at AMT. Here we got our back window being glued up in place, as well as the front window, which includes some sun visors. So always remember to paint those up so they don't look like clear plastic. And then here we also have our rear view mirror. And it's showing all the different ways to paint this thing with all the different paint coats as shown on the front of the instruction sheet. Carrying on our story into part B, we have the rest of the cab being glued together, which includes the upper brace for our hood, that includes the hood release on the real truck. We also have our radiator support, the horn, our radiator. Then we have this front panel insert, as well as the chrome and our quad headlights down here. Firewall gluing up in place, interior tub completed from previous step going up. And then we have the back panel, which glues into the back of the cab. Panel six gives us a skinny on the truck box. Here we have the truck box itself with the floor panels being painted a separate color here, probably a wood grain. 
And then the side of the box getting painted with body color. We also have our tailgate with Chevrolet stamped in it. Then we have the tailgate opening parts of our box here. I don't know what you call that. The hinges. All right. We also have our tail lamps being glued in place. Our chrome bumper, license plate, and the license plate decal going on the license plate. And we also have a painting call out here for the chains that are molded up on the side of these little panels. Now we got to bring this whole truck down together. So here we have the box being glued to the frame as well as the cab. And they're making a special note here to look on the front of the engine timing cover for this little piece because that is where the lower radiator hose will glue on and that will connect into the radiator which is up front in here. Over on the B side, we have our plated gas filler cap being glued on the side of the truck, as well as our chrome mirror. The battery drops in under hood. So does this component here, as well as the upper radiator hose. And this would be your heater hoses. So this would be the top of the heater. Panel C shows us the completion of our Apache Warrior here with the top of the hood and the lower section of the hood being glued together. We also have the Chevrolet emblem being glued in the center of the hood as well as these two vents which are getting glued into those holes. Then here we also have the hood hinges left and right hand side if you want to display your hood up. The front chrome bumper as well as the license plate and the license plate decal. And to wrap up the story of our Chevy pickup truck, we have this paint callout chart here, which shows the front chrome inserts on our hood and the paint color callouts in here. So this would be a vent and a vent, and inside would actually be a turn signal lamp. And here we've got our Chevy bow tie with the color to paint the inside of the bow tie. And as a bonus to our model kit, we get this separate instruction sheet here for our go-kart assembly. Here you get an optional hood, as well as a little gas single-cylinder engine, and all the goodies that go on there. The rear nerf bar and the front nerf bar, as well as our wheels and tires, the roll cage and the seat, seat belt, and steering column going down into the front. And to top it all off, we also get the frame rails that go across to hold the go-kart in place as you're traveling down the road. There are two of these, so you'll have to mount them in the truck according to where they touch on the wheels. Here we have the plastic cab for our nice Chevrolet Apache fleet side. And again, it's really, really a good kit. You can see the roof panel here is solid with two holes for that separate panel that we'll glue in later. Take a look at the vent up here. Again, really cool just underneath the windshield wipers. Under the hood has nice detailing in there. There are two sections that we will need to remove with our hobby saw and then clean up with some files and sandpaper. The Chevrolet Apache emblem on the side is well detailed, as are the door handles. I just love the way the roof is with these nice, nice indented panels. That also has the rear window. You could really cut in here as well if you want the full window across the back, which I do believe was an option back then. There are some uh, areas here where they cut it off the parts tree that you will have to clean up again with your sandpaper. A couple of mold marks underneath which get removed with your number 16 hobby blade. Check out those cool roof details up here, just like the real truck has those overhead bars. Again, really, really awesome work from AMT and will look good on your shelf. And here we have the truck bed as well, which again is a nice, nice feature. I think I totally called it correctly when I said to paint these with a wood grain color. 
You can also use some bare metal foil on top of these bed rails just to give a nice shine in here. Underneath the wood grain is continued across the bottom again. And we've got some pins that mount up on the frame and whatnot. Again, really nice looking, but does have a bit of flash around the edges, which again you will have to clean up. This panel here is of course nice and smooth, but you'll never see it up against the cab. So let's just bring the cab back into the equation for a minute and get a bit of an understanding on how the truck will look once all put together. There it is. Our next parts tree includes the hood hinges, the top of the hood, our rear differential in two pieces, the anti-sway bar, and our other bars here. We have our shock absorbers front or back and front, as well as the upper A arms, our drive shaft right over here, and the spare tire. So let's scoot this on up into the lens as we take a look up underneath. Check out all the bracing in there, really, really cool again. Not too much on mold marks. The spare tire might have some inside, but that's going to get covered up, up underneath the frame. There are a few on top of the upper A arms, which you can deal with, with that number 16 hobby blade. Just check out that detail inside that hub. Isn't that amazing? Look at the bolts on the rear axle again. Very, very nice. And the hood hinges look like the actual, real, one-to-one -one scale hood hinges of the 1960s Chevrolet Apache. Our next parts tree includes the tie rod and our front suspension with the torsion bars. We will have to remove this little piece as well as remove it off the parts tree for our truck. And here we have the rough section or the roof section as it's known in Canada up here in the Great White Chili North. And luckily here we have the stamp, but this part, as you remember, gets glued up onto the top of the cab. And right here we also have that suspension, so let's just take a look at this up into the camera. And again, you can see just how nicely AMT made this. The model kit has held up well since 1998, and even includes the Ertl badge on here, which is original. So again, you got another wonderful kit from AMT under round two, which was originally released by AMT Ertl back in the days when they were competing against Tamiya of Japan, to see which would be the best model kits. Here as a mock-up is the truck with that roof just popped into place. And you can see just how hard this would have been to mold as one piece because the roof actually goes back and then comes out on this lip here, just underneath the window or on top of the window, I guess you would say. You also have this nice ridge up along here on that roof panel. And the fit is very, very nice and tight. We'll have to remove this once I get a chance, of course, but that just allows me to unpop it to show you just how wonderfully this goes together and that those mold marks up in the corner, although you could remove them, it's not really necessary to remove just based on the tightness of this roof going down. But it's always a good, good thing to do anyway. And again, you can see the nice drip rail molding going up over the top, which again would have been darn near impossible to mold as a one piece. Here we have our parts tree with the engine block as well as the radiator support and that upper brace, firewall, dashboard, and all the engine components here, actually the underhood components, the oil pan, the front timing chain cover, our distributor here, our coil, our valve covers, and the radiator. One thing that's really weird on my sample here is this is gone yellow which I wonder what happened. Did they leave it in the sun before they packed it in the model? There is a bit of flash around this engine, which of course you'd need to clean up. But overall, this is still a wonderful model kit. There is quite a bit of a curve on my parts tree, as you can see there. So that means they pulled this off the mold when it was still a little bit hot. So hopefully there's not too much warpage going on. But overall, I would say this is really excellent. Just take a look at the dashboard details. Again, very beautiful and well done. It's got the gauges in here, correct looking. The firewall again, and the bolts on the timing chain cover, as well as the oil pan and that wonderful battery there. A uh, 12 volt, I do believe, back in the day. And then our radiator. Could also be six, it's hard to tell. 12 and six volt was, uh, well, six volt was a standard for the longest time. 12 volt was just starting to come in around there. 
Check this out, Hepcats. We've got our chassis here again with another little section you need to remove as well as this red cheer. And again, we've got the wonderful X-Frame, which was a GM standard back in the day, with the side frame, which also adds strength into there. Unlike the passenger cars, which just had this wide open, there's the front suspension and the cross braces all molded in place, as well as the rear tire carrier. And you can see that it's nice and open right there. Again, a bit of yellowing on my plastic. I don't know what they're doing. What kind of chemicals they're using there, Jim? But overall, again, a wonderful model kit. We do have some mold marks up under here, which you'd need to remove with that number 16 hobby blade and a couple of little buttons on the ends of the frame rails, which also have to come off where the bumper is going to go. Our bumper bracket support. Again, looking really, really good. Few sink marks in along the frame, which you can choose to actually fill with some putty. Might be a little bit of a challenge getting down into some of these areas with the sandpaper and the files to clean them up. But overall, you could just paint it flat black and hope for the best. Here we have two parts trees because basically showing you a parts tree with just a steering wheel on it is a little bit boring. So let's not get bored with our Chevy here. Let's see what else we got. There's the lower part of the hood. We also have those eyebrows that glue up onto our dashboard and our steering column, as well as the heater right here and our heater hoses and which is our steering box, which am right there. So looking at this again, we've got some wonderful detail. Just move our Apache steering wheel out of the way. Again, this will look really, really good. And there's the detailing, which you could not mold as a one piece on a hood. It'd be very difficult to mold it that way. So AMT has chosen to mold it as a pancake in two wonderful pieces. Now looking at that steering wheel, we do have a little center hole which is open which could be used for mounting on the steering column or for putting on the central horn button and horn ring if it does have one. Again, really excellent work from AMT from back in 1998 from all that great crew at the time as well as from round two of today. On this parts tree we have our front springs, coil springs for the suspension that is, and we also have our front spindles left and right our wheel backs as well as the wheel retainer clips. So taking a look up here we can see the nice detailing on the springs and on the backs of the wheels. Again wonderful work and will make your car ride perfectly. This parts tree includes our wonderful floor panel with the rubber floor mat molded in place as well as the front gas pedal. Here we have the panel for our grill and we also have the back of our truck bed. These are the panels here which hold our hinges on for this great Chevrolet tailgate. Now let's bring this up to the camera and just have a quick look here. You can see the wonderful floor mat in place with all the texture. Heck, you can even hear it. And there we have the insert, which looks like one of the George Bear style front rolled pans, doesn't it? There we have the back of our tailgate here. And we have the tail lights, which glue into place there, and that sunken in Chevrolet logo. Again, really wonderful work. If you're ever considering a pickup truck from 1960, this would be the one. Look, it even has Chevrolet stamped backwards inside on that tailgate, just like the real thing would have had. And underneath there is some bracing detail as well, just to make this thing look 100% accurate to the real 1960 truck. Here we have two parts trees. Now this includes the back of the cab itself, as well as our side door panels. And take a look at that nice vent right there, again with the grills in place. And we also have our rear exhaust pipes, which again are very nicely molded. So there's the pipes. Pipes! The pipes! Again, really, really good components. And here we can see our door panels. Look at that GM door handle there and the window winder it looks like the real thing. Let me just grab you the real thing just to show you what the real thing looks like. There's the real thing right there. And again, that's the nice part about molding these panels nice and flat as opposed to the old tub style from the 50s and 60s as far as molding goes. Again, the boys back in 1998 really put in a lot of time to get this right. And even here they've got 1960 Chevrolet custom fleet side 
used under license, molded right in there. The only thing I don't understand is why all the yellow plastic from round two? What is going on? Anyway, again, wonderful parts and a wonderful model. Here we have the parts trees, which include our air cleaner in the two pieces, our carburetor, intake and exhaust manifold, and the generator. And here we have that two-piece bench seat. Almost looks like you can make it flip forward, doesn't it? But not quite. If you want one of those kits, look for the 1955 Chevrolet Cameo, which will make its Cameo up here. Click there and you'll be able to see that video. If not the 55, then the 57. Pretty much the same kit, but again, amazing. Just like this kit, amazing. Here we have all the chrome that is the chrome for our 60 Chevrolet Apache pickup truck. And again, it's not too much, just like the original 1998 release. Only one flavor, and that would be stock. However, you could find some custom hubcaps or wheels and hopefully be able to fit them in. Just take a look at some of the other AMT kits which offer that nice wheel with the pin style the uh, wheel retainer clips and see what you can come up with. But overall, you can't complain about these hubcaps. They are accurate and look terrific. Same with these nice vents and, of course, our turn signal lights in there. There's our rear view mirror, our side mirror, the gas filler, and the Chevrolet emblem. And then take a look at those nice bumpers. Again, really excellent even have the bolts molded in where the brackets would hold them on. And there's our grill, and it's got Chevrolet molded in up top, just for authenticity's sake. And again, really wonderful stuff from AMT. And now, Hepcats, to get you in the clear, we have the shooby doo clear parts. And there's our red tail lamps, again, very small, just like on the real truck, and our quad headlamps. These would be a 5-inch diameter headlamp, it looks like. There's our front windshield with the side windows, the no drafts, as well as the sun visors, which you will need to paint because having them clear is kind of ridiculous. And there's our rear window, and it also has a molding on here that you can paint around just like the real truck. A rubber molding or even chrome with your bare metal foil. Take a look how wonderful this is. Very easy to build, very simplistic. Move those taillights out of the way so that we can see what's going on. The headlights also have the crosshatch pattern. Remember, this goes north and south, east and west, and not at 45 degree angles, or any other angle for that matter, up and down, left and right. Three chords in the truth, my friend. That's the way we play it. Here we have the little hole for the rear view mirror, which would be right there. And there are some mold marks, but you could very carefully try to remove them with your number 16 hobby blade. Might be best just to leave it alone. The taillights do have a little bit of detail on there. Some lines going like this, and not like this, but just like this, which is groovy for all you beatnecks out there looking for the latest beat. So just for something a little bit different, I thought I would do a comparison with the tires from 1998 in the first run edition of this kit versus the new tires from this kit from RC2. Now, first off, one thing to note about these the originals had the Firestone Supreme lettering in the tire, as well as the Firestone logo, whereas the new ones don't. The originals are just solid black walls. The new ones have the thick 60s style white wall on one side, and then the narrow band later 60s white wall on the other. So again, quite a few differences. Even the tread patterns are different. Uh, not by much. They are both the lines that are running parallel to the outside rim of the tire, but the little side areas here are different. This one has more of a mesh going on, whereas this one is more like little dots around the side. I'm not too sure which tire is more accurate, but overall both of these tires are quite nice. It all depends on what you want on your truck. So this one, the earlier version, would be more utilitarian and the newer one would be more deluxe. So let's just move these tires out of the way and focus on our new ones, which again are very nice. The tread pattern is a bit lower. You won't have to use your wheel spinning tool to get rid of any seam lines out of here because they are quite perfect. I do like the narrow band. It does add a little bit of class, sort of like a, a smaller later 60s dress up onto the tire, but of course, 
who can resist the wide white walls of the earlier 60s, which is when this truck is based. Our second comparison is between the decal sheet. Now this is the original version from 1998, and as you can see you get an Illinois Fleet license plate, a Colorado license plate, and a Nebraska license plate, and that was the only decal option. So now flash forward up to 2023 and let's check out the decals. Here we have the current decals for 2023, and look at this decal sheet. This is amazing. You get all these side scripts as well as the bow ties for the hood. Now they do give you two sets of these, so I could actually use this decal sheet to supplement the original kit from 1998, which is amazing. Look at how many different Chevrolets are on the back of that um, tailgate there. We got Daddy-O, which is <laughs> the typical saying back in the day. Look at these 1960 license plates here. These look a little more accurate than the original. We got one that says go-kart parts, so that fits that go-kart theme, as well as a regular standard plate. Unfortunately, I can't see where these are from, so I'll add that in the description down below. There's go-kart mart, which is, uh, of course, a go-kart racing thing. Look at all the go-kart teams. Look at all these great decals. Keith Super Service. That would be anything you want, really. Jonesing to repair your ride. So again, that would be more of an auto body and mechanics thing. Look at these hands and feet on here. That's interesting. Almost like skeleton style. We get two instrument gauges, which are looking to me like the same panel. So again, I could use that in my earlier truck if I want to. We've got champion spark plug decal. We've got some numbers down here and the little dots for your go-kart. Different colors of stripes. The California custom decal for the doors. Headman headers, Hearst shifters, auto light, really cool, zigzag go-kart racing, espresso racing team from Coolville, <laughs> Scooby-Doo reference, I think. Look at these wrenches on here, that's for the super service. Maybe again, these are for the super service thing, I'm not quite sure. Uh, lots of cool decals on here, a lot of them for the go-kart universe. So you could use this with any truck you want, uh, that uh, you want to add a go-kart to. Now let's check out this groovy little go-kart. And it looks just like the advertisement from last year's Carcraft magazine, 1959, that I showed earlier. There is the chassis, tubular man, as well as our tires on here, and a very sci-fi looking seat, maybe from Buck Rogers or something like that. We've got our seat belts as well, and here are the rails for the truck. And like I was saying before, you want to position one of these at the back of the truck bed and then move the front one to match where the front axle is going to be. Your tires would go in between these rails or possibly on these pads. Again, I haven't built this with the go-kart, so I'm not quite sure where it's going to line up. But overall, nice. We got some flash on there, which is a little bit of a setback. And mold marks here and here on the seats, as well as under here, but that might not make a difference. You'll have to get rid of those with your number 16 hobby blade. And again, we got this nice little piece right here, which looks like a place for your feet if you were to ride on this go-kart. Again, really cool stuff. Let's check out the chrome for the go-kart. And now here's all the chrome that is the chrome for our little go-kart. There we have our roll bar and the front and back nerf bars, as well as our engine components and steering wheel and much, much more. So let's bring this groovy little piece right up into the camera where we can check the beat for our beat necks. And again, really nicely done on here. Nice to get something for that cab bed, or sorry, the pickup truck bed that is not another wrench or oil can, but that can be something just as cool. And there it all is. Again, really wonderful work here. You can see the chain right on those components. Again, really, really awesome stuff. And this should be a joy to build. Thank you very much for watching this unboxing video of the AMT 1960 Chevrolet Fleet Side Pickup 
with go-kart. And if you've built this model kit in the past, let us know on our Facebook page and give us some pictures too. We'd love to see how you did it. And if you would like to see all the model kits that we have available right now for sale that you can pick up just a mouse click away, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter because we have weekly deals with our newsletter, sometimes going up as high as 20%, maybe a bit more. You will have to find out by becoming a member today. And you can do that over at www.monster-hobbies.ca. In the right-hand corner, look for a little button that looks like an airmail envelope. You can't miss it. Click on there and sign up for the newsletter. Easy as one, two, three. Takes a couple of seconds to get you into all the savings at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, keep your wheels on the road and happy model building. We'll see you in the next video.